So in this video, I'm going to cover some tools I found particularly useful when attempting to enumerate Active Directory user accounts through completing the Hack the Box attacking Active Directory track, which I've got on my screen here, which uh, I highly recommend, I found really useful, I've completed a few boxes on it already. And also when I've been studying for the PMPT exam. So in this video, I'm going to cover four tools, uh, Kerbrut, RPC Client, LDAP Search, and Enum for Linux. Now, I will preface this video with that this isn't meant to serve as an in-depth tutorial for each tool, simply how to utilize them to enumerate AD user accounts. Also, this video is for strictly educational purposes and is meant to serve as study material for cybersecurity courses such as the PMPT, which I've mentioned. So in this example, I'm going to use the Resolute box from HTB, and I've already performed an MMAP scan against the box, which you can see here. So we can see that we've got Kerberos running on port 88, and we can also see that the device is part of the megabank.local uh, domain, so we've got this returned a couple of times on our MMAP scan. And we also know that the device is a domain controller as all DCs listen on port 389 uh, running the Microsoft Windows AD LDAP service. And also domain controllers also often run a DNS resolution, uh, resolution service. Uh, and we can also see this on port 53 here. So we can see DNS running away there. So the first tool I want to cover is Kerbrew, which is written in Go and is designed to quickly brute force and enumerate valid AD accounts through Kerberos pre-authentication. Now, I don't believe Kerberos is installed on Kali by default. So, however, I will include a link in the video description for installation instructions and all relevant links for the tools I have covered. Um, so it can easily be installed using pip3 or you can just uh, clone the repository from GitHub which is the method I use to write it to my ops directory. Now, Kerbrew, um, uh, sorry, brute forcing Windows passwords with Kerbrew is incredibly simple. Uh, and what I find quite cool is that Kerbrew brute forcing is potentially stealthier since apparently pre-authentication failures do not trigger um, a 4625 failed Windows login event, which is quite cool. And it has four main commands, which we can see here. We have the brute uh, user, which is to brute force a single user's password from a word list. We have the brute force option, so we could read a username and password combo uh, from a file or standard input and test them. Uh, we also have the password spray option, so we could test a single password against a list of users. And we have the user enum command, which is used to enumerate valid domain usernames via Kerberos. In this video, I'm just gonna focus on the user enum command and the syntax starts, if I just go back to my uh, command prompt here, the syntax starts with specifying where Kerbrut uh, will be run from. So in this example, like I said, I've saved it to my op directory, and then we need to specify the user enum command. Uh, and then we need to specify the dash D argument, which is the domain we're going to be brute forcing against. So like I say, from our uh, MMAP scan, we've, all, we've already identified it's the megabank.local. Um, so we've got that already to hand. And then next, what you need to do is provide a list of usernames that you want to use to brute force a valid account. So I like to use the 10 million usernames list that's built into Kali. So we can see here, it's already sort of offering my prompt. So I'm just gonna tab across to save me typing that all in. Uh, but we've got the location there of the uh, text file of all the usernames in. And then we have to specify the domain controller we're targeting. So dash dash DC, uh, and then the IP address, which is 10.10.10.169 of the Resolute box. Uh, after we've got that, press enter. And quite quickly, I'm just gonna stop this. Um, we can see Kerberich running. We've got the date, time, and it's already found a bunch of valid usernames here. So we've got Steve at megabank.local. All the way down here, we've got an administrator one as well. So we could now output these to a file um, and start uh, using these 
um, to perform further attack. So like I said, with this list of users, we could now use a tool such as Impacket's Get MP Users to check for any accounts that may be vulnerable to AS rep roasting. Um, so we could potentially pull some password hashes and crack them offline. But I'm gonna cover um, that in another video that's strictly focused on Impacket. The next tool uh, I find quite useful when trying to enumerate user accounts is RPC client, which can be used for domain enumeration through the SMB and RPC channels, which if we go back to the Nmap scan, we have RPC open on port 135, and we have SMB open on 139 and uh, 445. So if I just go back to my RPC client um, tab. So as a quick overview, RPC or remote procedure call is a service that helps establish and maintain communication between different Windows applications. Now, I won't go in too deep on this, but I have provided an awesome blog. Um, if you want to do a bit more reading up on, I'll provide that in the uh, video links. So again, in this video, so what I'm sort of going off here is a scenario where I have no domain user accounts or passwords to use, so I can't authenticate with this server and I've got to try connecting without providing any creds. Um, so this is done by running RPC client with the dash U argument. So again, really easy to use here, RPC client dash U for username. And we can see we've got these two speech marks here, which I'm just basically using to indicate that no creds are being provided, followed by dash N, which is saying no password. And again, we're providing the same, um, IP address for the um, Resolute box here. So hit enter on that. If it's successful, we can see here, we have this um, RPC client shell. And what we should be able to do now is run some enumeration commands. So what we can do first of all, is see what user accounts are configured using uh, the enum dom users command. Now again, depending on the settings and uh, privileges may or may not work. So this is the first one I like to use. And we can see here it's pulled back a list of users and their associated RID, which stands for relative ID. So this is basically any AD user will have a unique assigned SID, which is their security identifier. And the RID is the incremental portion of that SID value. What we can also do, so like I said, we've got a bunch of users here, we've got administrator um, and a bunch of you know random names provided here. But what we can do next is we can then enumerate what groups are configured using the um, enum dom groups command. So if I just do this now and then hit enter, uh, we can then see what uh, groups we've got here. So we've got the uh, domain admins group. Um, again, each group has its own RID provided. Uh, what we can also do next is we can actually then query against each group specifically. So like I say, we've got the RID. So I could type in next query, the query group command. Um, let's just do it with the right uh, case sensitivity. Uh, and then what we have to do is just provide the RID of the group we're interested in. So I'm just going to focus on the domain admins, which has got the RID with the hex value 0x200. So if I hit enter on that, it provides us with the group name, uh, a short description, the group attribute, I'm not sure what that is to be honest, and then the number of members. So we've got one member in this group. What we could then do is try and find out who that group member is by doing the query group mem command. So again, if I just do that correctly, Query group mem, and again, we need to provide the RID value of the um, group we're interested in. And we can see here we've been provided an RID of a user. Now this is showing us as 0x1f4. If I just scroll back up to my users, we can see that the administrator account is what's being, well, which is the member of this group here. So the administrator is the only member of the uh, domain admins group. What we can also do as well, there's a different command for querying users, called, it's called query user. I'm gonna focus on this Marco accounts here. So I can do query user, and then just enter the username that I'm interested in. 
Um, and then what this does is gives us some login information, password change details, along with a potential description of the account. So in this one here, we can see that um, it looks like a default password, which may or may not work for this user has been left in the description. Uh, and finally, just another good one to use is query, well, it's, I imagine it stands for query display info, query disp info. If we hit enter on that, again, that's providing us the same information about the users. Um, so we have the um, RIDs, we have the accounts, and we have the descriptions, uh, if, if any have been provided. So again, quick, easy, nice little way of enumerating um, some AD accounts. Uh, using uh, our PC client. Yeah, so I quite like that one. The next one we're going to take a look at is LDAP search. So if we just go back to our MMAP scan, we can see that port 389 is open and running LDAP, which we'd expect to see for a DC. So like I say, the next tool I'm going to use is LDAP search. So if I click on this tab here, which I've got provided, um, the syntax begins with simply providing uh, the command LDAP search and what we have to do is just give it a host. So in this one we just have to give the syntax LDAP at the start of a colon slash slash 10.10.10.169 and then we have to provide the dash x argument and what this is just saying is that we will trust any certificate provided by the directory server and then we have to provide the dash B argument. Uh, and this way we have to specify the base uh, domain, which we've already identified as a megabank. So we do megabank. Um, and it was dot local. Uh, and I'm just going to tab across. I don't, uh, we provide the, the string object class equals person. But then what I'm also doing is then is I'm piping out the output of LDAP search. And I'm just going to grep for this value here, Sam account name. So when I hit enter on that, super quick, it pulls back um, a list of uh, users um, and domains. Uh, sorry, just a list of users, user accounts that we've got from uh, that domain, which is uh, really useful. So again, like I say, we've got the Marco account. That was the one we queried earlier. Uh, and the next and final one I'm going to take a look at is enum for Linux. Uh, and this is a Linux alternative of the tool enum.exe for enumerating data from Windows and Samba hosts. Uh, and this is a great tool for pulling out AD info. So really simple to use if I just do there, uh, enum for Linux. And tab across. The only argument I'm providing there is dash A, which will run basic enumeration uh, and pulls out quite a lot of data. So if I just hit on that now, this just may, uh, may take a few uh, a few seconds just to pull back some info here. Um, it does pull back quite a bit of data, um, quite similar to the um, query display info uh, and the numbed on users query in our PC client. Um, but at the top here, we see we've got our target. Um, and you can see, well, you can see here, it's just now firing away nicely. So I'll just let it it's, uh, run through here. So we can see it's punched a, a bunch of groups. We can see like the RID values again, which we found earlier. Local groups, local group memberships. So really useful tool, this. I really like this. And like I said, this is just like the basic scan that's being performed here. So if I just scroll back up, um, and I'll just go down uh, slowly. So again, this is like the display info that we saw before from um, one of the other tools off the top of my head, was, was it um, RPC clients? And uh, what else have we got? It's looking for map shares. But like I say, I'm interested in the uh, users really. So we've got the groups here and the RIDs. And as we scroll down here, we can see we've got the um, users here. So we've got administrator again, we've got Marco, who we did a bit quick query on before. So yeah, so yeah, that was it. Like I say, first video I've done in a while, hoping to do a lot more content now, focused on attacker tooling, threat hunting, 
Um, so hopefully that'll be of use to people. I'm still going to keep it to the sort of method I've used before rather than running through things like hack the boxes. I'm going to sort of group tools, techniques together that people may find useful. So yeah, thanks for watching. And like I say, stay tuned. There's going to be future content coming soon. Uh, glad to get the first video out after over a year. So catch you guys soon.